Run it up, then run it back. Yeah. Run it up, then run it back. Run it back. Run it up, then run it back. Yeah. Good Thursday it morning. Yeah, Welcome yeah. to Run It Back. We uh we have a show. It's full of things. I'm not one of those people who says we have a great show in store for you because I don't know yet. <laughs> we don't know DVD. if it's going to be great. But we're going to do our best. I'd like to introduce the crew, Stadium Insider Sham Sharania, rocking the whole black on black. I love this. He showed up, ladies and gentlemen. The odds mm. weren't good. But Chandler Parsons made it post-birthday celebration and pre-birthday celebration. Lou Williams on the end. What a weird week for us here. Guys, long night of basketball. We watched every single second, so we'd be prepared to talk about it. Yes, we did. Including the big debut of the alien, Victor Wembanyama. And man, Spurs fans showed up early for this one, hosting Dallas. Already a, a semi-rivalry, um, but they spoiled it. Dallas winning this one, 126-119. They scored the final eight points for the win. Bit of a dagger in that. Wemby finished with 15-5, five turnovers, and one block. Luka, however... Well, Luca and Kyrie, but Luca 33, 14, and 10. Kyrie had 22 points. I know this is probably going to be considered a slow start for Wimby given all the hype, but he did have nine in the fourth. Um, so let's just talk about what stood out. First of all, what stood out to me is how much this dude cared and how tough he was. Getting the crowd involved, everything he was doing, like he, he was feeding off that energy. And you could tell he was excited to be there. And yeah, he struggled a little bit early on and he's going to do that. He's, he had five turnovers. He's going he's gonna to make mistakes. And as far as like the expectations, they're, they're not unfair because he does show flashes. Like that is something that he shouldn't be doing at that size, <laughs> facing you up bang, bang between the legs and knocking down a three. But he did show flashes in the fourth quarter. Um, and, and I thought it was a great debut. I don't think we need to slow down any talks. I just think you need to be patient with this guy. Okay. The, the, you know what I mean? Like, just be patient, but he's going to have some huge games. He's going to have some bad games. He's going to have some bad turnovers. There's going to be a lot of different things going on this kid's first year. But I thought last night it was actually, you know, they were so much fun to watch between him and Sohan and Kelvin Johnson. And the, the, this is a fun team to watch. And they're a lot better than I expected. I no, love it, man. Love it. It, yeah. that, was, that was my first time I saw him with some emotion. Getting the crowd going, being excited. It was his debut. Um, a, lot to, a lot to build on, a lot to work on, but I thought the young guy played well. I like that. So none of us are lowering our expectations. We're just chilling. No, if anything, I they're like a f top three team to watch, I think, going well, forward. I mean, listen, well, they're fun. They're well. exciting. This kid's always going to get... What a difference that, that, that was fast. <laughs> this guy, he's exciting, and he gave me, he teased me a little bit last night with what's to come. What I what I loved is like when you when you watched him walking off the floor, how upset he looked about the loss and, right. and the fact that he he scores nine points in that fourth in, in that fourth quarter, like the jumpers that he was making. I mean, it was face ups from 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 mid range in the corner, threes. His he's I mean he's got everything, but just how frustrated he looked walking yeah. off the court. There w there wasn't any post game dap up. He looked like he was frustrated about the loss, and it was just one game. This um, first one, he'll settle in. He'll, he'll settle in. There, there's gonna be plenty this season. There's gonna be I mean, a few I, I more. Think, yeah. I, I think this is gonna be like Chandler said, a fun team to watch. But this is clearly still a rebuilding, retooling team. Um, but I'm I'm curious, like, what was Victor Wembanyama's first thought when he got in the locker room? Mm. Like, yo. I needed the ball right there. Like, why didn't I get the ball? He should have. probably should have had more touches. Well, yeah, that's level. another thing. I'd love to see him even more aggressive. He was very efficient, but the, as a young player, you tend to force, especially with him with all this pressure, all this expectations. People want to see him do more every single time he touches the ball, and he didn't, which to me so shows a huge sign of maturity that he's not going to press, he's not going to force, he's going to take what the defense gives him and continue to do what he does on that end. What do you tell a kid? I mean, he's, he's obviously bigger than everybody else on the court. And I, one of the guys last night was talking about fouls are going to be a lot easier on him as well. They're going to call him a lot more because just the size differential. How do you just sort of temper expectations yeah. on that? Coming from overseas, I think with the rule changes and, and how we're allowed to play in the NBA, I think he'll settle in. Um, and it's, all, it's always been a personal game to kind of get get rookies in foul trouble just to <laughs> test their temperament to see what, what's there and kind of play those mind games, playing chess a little bit. But he, I think he's settling. He'll be fine. And he'll learn. He's not going to get the same calls that a veteran guy is on the other team. And it's going to take him time just to understand angles more and his physicality. People are going to go right at his chest, mm -hmm. right? So he's, And he did a great job. First player, second player of the game, he, he comes help side, blocks Kyrie Irving's pull-up. Like, yeah. you, don't, you, you don't see that often. see that, right. Um, for just comparison's sake, Tim Duncan's first game was 15 points, 10 rebounds in his first. David Robinson, 23 and 17. Do you guys remember your first games? 
Uh oh. My first game actually was against the Spurs. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I didn't play well, but I remember my first ever point, I banked in a free throw. I know, I have it right here. I just oh. want to see if you remember it correctly. <laughs> do you, actually? you played 17 minutes. There we go. How many points do you think you had? Five. Whoa, he's good. You got it? I think five I Five and five. Four. Okay, yeah, let me see what's yours. You, do you remember um, you played three minutes? There it is. You, made, I, 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 did you definitely got a bucket. You made one shot. Yeah, you definitely got a bucket. <laughs> <laughs> three minutes is all you need. Three minutes, three minutes, four points. That was early. That's, yeah. that's all one you need. field goal in three minutes. That's pretty good. That's pretty good. That's crazy. Efficient. I can't Efficient. believe you got the five right. Who are you? Um, before the game, I mentioned it. The, the fans were there. They were loud. I think the the jumbotron video. They they're bringing back. Y'all ready for this? Which is such flashbacks for me Fire. personally. Um, Shams, it's it's. We knew it was going to be big. What's the last time, or when's the last time you saw something kind of like this? I mean, I was at Kawhi Leonard's return game. That was definitely very, very energetic. <laughs> yes, not not in this way. <laughs> nope. N not, n not in this cheering way, but I think, I mean, probably when they were getting to the finals. I mean, every single year I was I was at the, thir at the 13 finals, the 14 finals. Like those, the crowds in San Antonio, Man. I mean, you would, you would you can attest yeah. to it more. Like they get lively when, when it's a team they root for, when it's a team they feel like they can relate to. They, they get really rowdy. In San I can relate to an eight foot dude. A lot of yeah. people don't know San Antonio is a great basketball town. So to see that again, it's because it's been a while. It's been so a minute. To see that again, that was great. Guys, has anyone ever gone nine years without a championship? It's really hard. Mm. <laughs> but we're opening we're the so show spoiled. with the Spurs, Michelle. That's a, that's progress. That's a win. I'm, that's yeah, a win. I'm yeah. so happy. You know, patience. It paid off. <laughs> um, on the Mavs side of things, Luca was there. He was reminding everyone, "Hey, I'm still here, and I'm kind of awesome." A 30-point triple double, and it felt like, especially at the end. I mean, he had the dagger once and for all, Lou. It's. It's a reminder that he's top five, or you know we're gonna do some top fives today. <laughs> of course. I think we're I think we're running out of space in our yeah. top five. Yes, we yeah. are. <laughs> we're, we have expectations for all of these guys, but Luca had a great <laughs> night. Um, he put everybody on notice. You know he's 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 on par to have a great year. This is a this is a normal night for him. You know a thirty point triple double. This is business as usual for Luca. So that was a great night. Yeah, I agree. And this is obviously, we're going to continue to see a lot of this. It's it's a very Joker-esque game, right? He yeah. does a little bit of everything. He makes the big plays down the stretch. And they kind of play very similar. Obviously, one's a guard, one's a big. But no matter who's guarding Luka, no matter who's guarding Joker, you can't speed him up, right? You can put a smaller guy under him. He's still going to use his size. He's going to slow it down. Put a bigger guy on him. He can use his speed and get by him. So there's no one way to guard this guy. And you're going to continue to see gaudy stat lines like this all year long. He, uh, he's now the second favorite for the MVP running behind Jokic. Yeah. What is this? <laughs> Things will gonna, they're gonna change. It's been 48 hours? I know, yeah. put your, all your money on it right now. Um, <laughs> Derek Lively, if you were watching last night, was a name you heard the entire time. He had mm. 16 and 10. Uh, I'm going to assume the Mavs, did they know they were getting this? The, the Mavericks have been targeting Derek Lively since they got back into that top 10 Lottery positioning. We know about what happened that last week of the regular season. We shat. We. Uh, I don't want to give us too much credit, but we foreshadowed. We can. The fact that they were going to rest these guys, and they rested them, and they got fined. I think seven hundred fifty thousand by the league, and it was a big deal that they were clearly tanking, and they wanted that number ten pick because they wanted a chance to go get Derek Lively, and they end up moving back, get an asset, and then they draft him, and. I mean, Chandler can probably attest to this as well, but all the workouts that Derek Lively had in the lead-up to camp, they were raving about him. They're like, he's a starting caliber center. He's like Clint Capella, except longer, taller, hmm. lengthier, a lob threat, a guy that doesn't need the ball in his hands. So, Lively, last night, looked so lively. I'm not trying to drop too many no, balls. No, hey. Show yourself out. He, 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 was, <laughs> he, was, he was everywhere, and, and I think this was the perfect Mavericks game, 17-6 and six for Grant Williams, who they acquired. Kyrie Irving hitting two clutch shots. Luka Doncic... Um, having having a clutch moment at the end as well. Like, I think it was a perfect Mavs game. Again, they, they got to do it, do this against contenders moving forward as well. Yeah, and it's crazy to think that the whole tanking thing, the whole fine that Mark got last year, it, it worked. And this is exactly who they wanted. And this is why he's a perfect fit because he's not a big that requires the ball. They're not going to waste possessions by him going back to the basket. He's a live, bo live body. He's a rim runner. He's a great lob threat. When you have Luka in pick and roll and Kyrie in pick and roll who are so good at that, they can pick you apart. And having him roll to the rim and just being able to throw it up while they space the floor with shooters, with Tim Hardaway Jr., with Curry, with everything, it's a great format for their offense and this kid was active he altered shots defensively he was getting to the rim he was physical like 
I don't know. I thought he was starting. All the reports, all preseason that he's starting. I think eventually he gets in that starting lineup, but this is, it's looking like a, a brilliant pick. I want to move on to the next thing, but really quickly, they had Jason Kidd mic'd up for the entire second half. <clears throat> What'd y'all think about that? That's, that's that was crazy to me. It's scary. It's right? dicey. Yeah, on on, nas on, mean, national I, I, on national TV. I think they're doing that with with, with a lot with with a lot of because the WNBA and does now. it, I guess. Yeah, so they're they're. I, I think they're trying to do it more. That's a I don't. Long time. I can't see it lasting long though, because there's going to be it's some, gonna get some loose lips. Right. Yeah. Slips, or they're going to use nothing. Slips aren't the word. It's going to be crazy. <laughs> Just yeah. straight. Wee. It's going to be fun. I'm here for it. Um, the, the first game of the night was the Celtics-Knicks. Uh, yeah, Celtics with a spoiler. In the garden, 108-104. Tatum finished with 34 and 11. Poor Zingas, though, might be the story here. 30 points, 8 rebounds, 4 blocks. Played a lot. Brunson and Randall combined for 29. Um, the We've talked so much about all the off-season moves. What's the best? Who, who did the best? And then you see Porzingis last night play longer. I think they said he played the entire first quarter, which had not been done by him in quite some time. Would Could this possibly be the biggest move of the offseason, quietly? Sure, after 24 hours and after he <laughs> put up, you know, 30 and 8 <laughs> against a very, very solid defensive team. But look, he looked good. And this is the same thing that we were talking about with Lively. It wasn't just offensively with him. He had four or five block shots. He was altering shots. He would come over help side. He was talking. This is the Przingis that people expected. And yeah. I actually, it's, it's just watching this, I, I felt happy for him. He's back in the garden where, you, you know, he's had his ups and downs there. And he just, he looked kind Confident. He looked happy. He looked just like just reinvented and, and it's got a huge pickup for him because when you do have these guys like Tatum and Brown that can go and get you a bucket ISO, it's nice to have a seven foot <clears throat> two big that can stretch the floor and hit step back threes. Mm. Like that. I mean, come didn't on. Didn't call glass right. there, but this <laughs> shot, this shot was huge. He's, he's gonna he's, get more wide open shots than ever. He's gonna, he's gonna get more wide open shots playing on the Boston Celtics this year than he did with playing with Luca, just because the way they play. Sure. Those two guys on the wing, it, it's, it looks like a great fit. But yeah, if he's gonna average 30 and you know shoot 80 percent from the field and nine for 10 from the free throw line, it looks like it's gonna be a really good signing. He, he was out there balling. Yeah. yeah. For the first time in a long time, it looked like he was having fun out there and. You know, team-wise, I think with how they play, he gives them another big that can they can uh, stretch the floor out with Al Horford out there, open up those lanes for JB to go downhill, for JT to go downhill. But last night, it was Porzingis' show. That's a that's a good point. He looked like he was enjoying it, looked like he was which is nice fun. to see. Um, Tatum, you guys have already called it. Uh, I'm just gonna have you reiterate why you think <laughs> Tatum is the favorite for MVP. Finished with 34 and 11. What can you say? Looked like an MVP candidate to me. <laughs> <laughs> Made us look good so Easy. far. Made us look really yeah. good, man. Ten first quarter points. Um, it didn't force a lot. I thought one. It was there was one stretch in the game where he started forcing because I felt like he was trying to put the nail in the coffin. He was trying to get. He was trying to get New York out of there. But <laughs> other than that, after that game, MVP candidate for sure. He's got third best odds. Oh. Maybe, maybe it's time now to. Take it. Yeah, take, take it, it now because it could get better. You know, I want to make all the money I can, Shams. Um, I love watching games in the garden. I think it's always fun. Even the first game of the season, the, the energy was good. Celtics winning in that place kills Knicks fans. But what did you take away from it? I mean, I took away that I think last year a lot of people forgot. Christoph Sporzing has averaged career highs in points, 23 points. Career, career high in field goal percentage, 49.8. When you're playing for the Wizards, I think last season he got forgotten about. You, but he's, you could tell the way he's playing, it's its different. Like he's, he, I feel like he was forcing a lot of post-ups when he was with the Mavericks. Now he's fine being a, a floor spacer. He's fine picking his spots. And still he's putting up these these gaudy numbers. Most points all time for Celtics debut, 30 points. That's crazy, by the um, way. Five of nine. I mean, this could be every night oh. where he's putting up eight to ten threes because of the wide open shots he's going to get. And I think when you look at the totality of the Celtics offseason, they, they essentially traded Marcus Smart, Grant Williams, and Rob Williams. For, the, for these for this duo, Drew Holiday and Chris Porzingis, they they double down on kind of wanting more star power, wanting more guys that they can depend on, uh, because as you guys know, when the when the playoffs come, rotations shrink. You know, Lou, uh, Lou probably goes from a sixth man to like a fifth starter, like like come playoff time, like rotations shrink, and they went with two guys instead of three. And I and I saw you Knicks fans on Twitter. They were not happy with the officiating last night. It was hmm. very very loud. Um, we <laughs> hear you. We saw you. I, the, the flopping being a tech is an interesting one for me. But they shot 37 percent last night, and they did keep it quite <clears> close. <throat> but without a superstar, if they don't in the end do something this season, what is the ceiling for them? 
make the playoffs, get a good matchup in, in round one, and hopefully advance. And it's tough when you don't have that go-to guy. And as good as Jalen Brunson is, we were talking about yesterday, the day before, top five point guards, top seven points. <laughs> we never even mentioned this guy. And, yep. he, and he has had a, he's gotten so much better each year. And I love the Knicks bench. Looking at the game last night, I, I, honestly, I have concern about the Celtics bench. They got Pritchard, mm -hmm. they got you know, Hauser, Horford. They're not that deep. They're, but they're, I think the best starting five. But the Knicks bench kind of exposed them yesterday with DiVincenzo, with Hart, with these guys quickly had a huge game. So I love what the Knicks are doing. I think they have this group that is very versatile. They can go big. They can go small. I loved Hartenstein even off the bench coming in, fouling hard. Like this was a, this was a, this was a great loss if that's possible on that's the first fair. loss. You know what I mean? Like I, they look solid and they definitely can grow from this, but yeah, it's tough when you don't have a go-to guy. When your go-to guy goes six of 21, it's tough to win games. Is that not good? It's not great. Okay, fair enough. I and then Randall, I mean, yeah. five for 22. I mean, you, R Randall could be their best player. You know, could under, be. Uh, you know. Is it the shoes? Or the <laughs> Go on. <laughs> <laughs> Pelican, Pelicans played the Grizzlies, and for Zion fans, it was nice because you got to see him finally. Last time we saw him was January 2nd. He put up 23. He was 9 of 17 uh, and had seven rebounds. He also had the last 12 points for the team, which is nice to see. Um, a lot of injuries in this dude's career. <sighs> so I ask you this. I want you to look into your crystal ball. Are we going to see, are we going to get back the player that we, that we all want to see? Are you asking me about injuries? Yeah, I am. I am looking right <laughs> at you. Because look, I mean, the injuries he got. The hamstring, he missed 29 last year. Yeah. Uh, foot injury, eight, six, I, it's, it's a lot. The knee surgery. And then, of course, the fluctuating weight, which everyone seems to want to talk about all yeah. the time. Poor guy. Well, here, the, the thing is, when he plays, this isn't about production or talent. With yeah. him. When he is on the floor, he is so good. He is so efficient. If he's playing 30 minutes, he's having 25, 8, and 5. You know what I mean? He is that good. He is that talented. It's just all the other stuff. It's all, how many games can he play? How many minutes can he play? What, is, or do they have enough to keep him healthy throughout an 82-game season to have him in the playoffs? Because when you look at their team, too, they're a sleeper in the West, too. Especially they get Alvarado back. They get Murphy back. They have that deep team. They have shooters. They have a little bit of everything, but it's all dependent on Zion because it's again, it's it's like a sad feeling because the NBA is better when he's playing, and this team is dependent solely on him being healthy and dominating, which he does when he's on the floor pretty much every single game. <laughs> we just wait for it. There was a, a sequence of plays um, where you get sort of a, a flashback, a glimpse. I don't even want to say flashback. It makes it sound like he's 40. He's not. There's a lot going on here, and we've got a lot left with him. But here it is. This is Zion sort of vintage. Uh, oh, God. On Jaron uh. Jack, on the defensive player of the year, by the way. Lou, take me through what you're seeing here. Just talent. And I think what's needed from them, you know, on the Pelicans in the long run is just for him to be healthy and be consistent. Um, this is back-to-back -back play. Go Good <laughs> Look Lord. at this. Oh my, hold on. What, I mean, what With the right mind? hand, too. And that's yeah. on d the defensive player. Right. <laughs> like, it's not like... It's well, man. Efficient night. 23 points. 9 for 17 from the field. But again, I hate to be the dead horse, but he has to stay healthy. Yeah. And you know what I like, too? He's an, also another guy like zero threes last night. He doesn't settle. He gets. He knows his strength. He knows his weaknesses. Somehow, when you play a guy, it's like Garden Zebo. You know he's going, you can't stop, can't he's stop still it. getting left. It's crazy how <laughs> much you can force him right, but he's so strong, he's so physical, he's, he, gets, he can do, he does what he wants. That's got to be just demoralizing. It sucks. There's nothing you can do when he's there. Desmond Bain on the other side of things led the team with 31 points. So between he and Jaron Jackson Jr., is there enough there to keep the team afloat while we wait for Morant? I say yes. Uh, I think they're accustomed to playing without him sometimes. You know, with, with the injury that he had last year, with the troubles that he's had, um, they've played a lot of basketball without him. So I think they keep it afloat. And as long as they can defend, right? Mm. They have Marcus Smart on the wing. They have Jaron Jackson down low. So they have the, the, the roster to be able to hold these teams to, do, do I dare say, under 100 points? Like, you dare. That just, that just doesn't happen these days. But if they're going to win games and they're going to stay afloat without John Morant, they have to do it on the other end and then have explosive games from, J, from Triple J, from Bain, all those guys. Marcus Smart did have uh, 17. It was weird seeing him come into the arena just as a, not a Celtic. I had like a moment where I, I forgot for a second. Uh, Blazers, Clippers, another game that happened last night. Clippers with their first win. Here we go, 123-111. Um, these are the guys you want to know about. Paul George, 27 and 6. Kawhi, 23. He was 5 for 5 from 3. And then Scoot. We wanted to see what he could do. Oh, I think I got that wrong, didn't I? He had 11 points, 4 assists, 4 turnovers. Mm. Oh, I was, did I was, he end up with 11 points? 
Did you go to this one? I went to that game. And? He, he, he didn't have his first pickle, I think, until the third. Yeah. Yeah, I thought, he, I thought he struggled. But look, he's a young guy at that age. Your debut, you're looking at Kawhi Leonard, <laughs> Paul George, Russell Westbrook. Hey, look at him. Probably all Lou of Will his. in the house. Yeah, yeah you shout are. out to Six Man. Legend Lou. Shout out to my son, Six. I don't know, we had we both had funny faces in this pick. But no, it's good. Yeah, me and him, we had a good time at the game. But I, I, I thought Scoot was, uh, he, it just looked like regular rookie nerves. I think once he settles in, catches a groove, I think it'd be just fine. But last night, he, he just looked like he was trying to find that play to get over the hump and never could. And also, I don't care how talented these rookies are, how they have so many expectations, right? And this is the NBA. This is what they've dreamed about as a kid playing in these situations. Like Ludus said, it's his first, he's going against Kawhi Leonard, Paul George, arguably two <laughs> of the best perimeter defenders in the NBA. So there's definitely a, a level of nerves. Same with Wimbanyama, same with these other rookies that played last night. But, He's gonna figure it out. He's gonna get more comfortable every single game. Uh, Michelle just said, what, what were our debuts? Oh, they were pathetic. <laughs> they were great. It probably took me 30 <laughs> games to play. <laughs> I banked in a free throw, I was so nervous. There like, we these are. kids, are, they're gonna be fine. Well, and it, you can see it in the way the numbers progress. The first three quarters were nothing, really, and then he sort of maybe found himself a little bit. And look, he's got a, a former um, finals MVP point guard as his coach in Chauncey Billups. I know coaches aren't everything, but they can also be a problem. So how big is it that Chauncey is the guy? Yeah, I've, I've been with Chauncey as a coach. Uh, great voice, um, great temperament as a coach. Somebody that you easily can listen to because the, the proof is in the pudding when you watch what he's done over the course of his career. I think he's in good hands. Yeah, and as a guard, obviously, you have just a different level of respect from playing for someone who's who's done it. Who's done it's, it, It's yeah. not right. just someone telling, this guy's done it. He's been in the trenches. He's been in that film room. He's been on an island with a great guard, you know? So he's he's been there before. So it's a great role model. It's a great coach for Scoot, just as Jay Kidd is for these other guys, you know what I mean? So it's, it's, it's definitely better having someone that's been in your shoes before. The Clippers go as their two stars go. And that is, of course, Kawhi and Paul George. But the injuries, and when you think of injuries in the league, it's always Clippers first in most of our minds. So, I mean, are they contenders, or is that window gone? No, I, I think if those two guys are healthy, they're contenders. Now, we'll see how they you know, <laughs> beef up the team. Do they get James Harden at the end of the day? We'll talk about that a little bit later. But I think overall, if you have Paul George, Kawhi Leonard on your team, they're on the floor. And like, shout out to Russell Westbrook. 11 points, shout out. 13 Thank rebounds, you. five, Thank six you. Give him his uh, hours. rebounds I, as well. I thought Russell looked good last night. I thought, he was, I thought he was the key to how they played. They played very fast, up-tempo. He picked his spots to, to create and transition and attack the rim. Russ was the guy last night. Five of eight from the field, like he said, like he picked and chose his spots. And, and they got Bones Highland. Also, shout out to him, 17 oh, yeah. points. I think, yeah. like, he, he's playing with a different type of energy. He's kind of playing like how Lou did back in the day, bringing that spark. Really, he's, he's not worried really about playmaking. He's just scoring, doing his thing. So um, this is a team that has a good energy. Like, right. whether they get James Harden or not, I think you can see there's, a, there's an energy here. I think the team. only problem is the health thing. Yeah, they got to stay healthy. The two main guys got to stay healthy. If they're allowed, if they're able to get through this season and be intact, I think they give somebody a lot of trouble. If you're their teammates, do you go into, I mean, maybe you take it week by week, but are you preparing mentally? Like, there's going to come a time he inevitably. He was their teammate. I, mean, I was. Yeah, yeah, so like, how do, I mean, how, how, you, I mean, how, how do you, you wait? It? Are you waiting for the, hey, these guys aren't going? No, it was a roller coaster. It was a roller coaster. Did yeah. you roll your eyes sometimes? Be honest. You do it. No, because <laughs> no, because we got used to it. We were numb to it. Okay, that's. You know, if we wondering. would come in, if Kawhi had some issues and. You know, he's obviously the, the face of this low management thing. Um, he would go out and PG would step in, and then PG would go out, K, uh, K would step in. And so it was just hard to find that consistency what we needed because we were um, in a championship run. We felt like we had the group to do it. And so it was hard to just get our, uh, our, our feet up under us. But other than that, we played well, but they got to stay healthy. That's frustrating. And yeah, that's for, for sure. those guys, Terrence Mann, uh, Norman Powell, those yeah. guys have to have the understanding that there are going to be some nights where I'm going to be the guy because those guys are not going to play and they're going to be banged up. But you look at this roster, too. They're built to win now. They're not like the youngest right. team. They're Westbrook, Paul George, Covington, Batum, Leonard. Like, this feels like their window is getting smaller. And as long as they stay healthy, especially, obviously, those two guys, not one of them, they need both of those guys to be a contender at the end of the season. Without a doubt. Well, Lou was there at the, at the front the end. mental game. Yeah. He was there at the front end of this whole regime. Now, you know, these guys are both extension eligible. They have not, like, you saw what the Lakers did with Anthony Davis. They extended him right away. Kawhi Leonard, Paul George have been exten extension eligible for the last couple months. Neither have signed their extension. And I think, you know, when you see Paul George's comments, like, kind of gearing up for, you know, 
they could both end up being free agents this this upcoming summer. I think whatever happens this year has a lot to do with their futures with the Clippers or not. Yeah. Going into year four with, with those two guys, I think they're just waiting to see what happens. You know, like, like we just said, they haven't been healthy. They haven't had an opportunity to really get themselves that, that championship run that they've been looking forward to when they, both, when they bought both of those guys in. And so I think they're just holding the car, seeing what happens. I know we're going to go to break, but I, I find that interesting, you both saying they're waiting to see what happens. Aren't they the waiting to see what happens hmm. part? Uh, injury prone. Because what, like, what are they injuries. waiting to see? I mean, just, we're all waiting on that. Both healthy, of those right? guys have had major injuries. And <laughs> I've, hmm. I've watched both of them fight day in and day out trying to stay healthy, yeah. dealing with those injuries, you know. So Kawhi tears his thigh up, has a knee issue. Uh, Paul George, that catastrophic foot injury he had then to get injured again after that. Uh, you know, those guys had some real, some real issues that... You know, I think for the first time in a long time that they they feel like they can go into the season healthy and stay that way. It is interesting, though. Like, how much longer do they need to be healthy for them to get the extension? Another right. month? Like, a, 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 what, what's the timetable on finally being like, you know what? These are our That's guys for the next time. three years. We like, see yeah, what we need. You know? Yeah. I mean, you, you look at the way they're playing this out. I mean, if these guys have a healthy playoff run, and let's say they get to the conference finals again as a duo or the NBA finals, then at that point, you know, but again, only the Clippers can answer that, what their timeline is. If these guys are all healthy, they're the number one seed in the West at all-star break and everything's good, do they extend them then? But they're clearly, like Lou said, they're holding their cards a little bit. They want to see how these guys perform, and I think it, it goes both ways. I think both Kawhi and Paul George want to see how this year goes. How, like, what's the direction uh, for this team? And with that new arena coming, they don't want to be tanking and rebuilding. They need these two guys. They need the excitement going into that new situation. So fingers crossed that these guys can stay healthy because they are a very good team when they are. Good luck and to the guys, man. Yeah. I, ho I hope it works out. I'm personally invested in that, so I, I hope it works. It'd be not I know, and I think we want to see them go f as far as possible. And maybe it'll be with or without James Harden when we come back. <laughs> the latest on him and how did Ben Simmons look? Oh man, when Run It Back returns. Run it up, run it back, yeah. Run it up, run it back, yeah, yeah. Run it up, run it back. I truly wish I got paid extra every time I asked the next question because I'd be rich. Uh, Shams, what's the latest on James Harden? So James Harden was away from the team. We, I mean, we spoke about this live. He reported back to the team after 10 days yesterday, but there wasn't really much. The, the Sixers held the practice. James Harden did a little bit of pre-practice drills. So really stood on the side for most of practice. I, I was told at one point he was sitting in a chair watching 5-on-0 drills, huh. didn't participate in that. But then he wanted to travel with the team and wanted to accompany them. They have a two-game road trip <laughs> Thursday in Milwaukee, Saturday in Toronto. Uh, sources told me he had his bags packed, ready to go. He made multiple efforts to travel with the team. But the team asked him not to travel, to stay home. Um, he wanted to be around the team, work out with the assistant coaches. The team wanted him to be essentially at home training and working out with their medical staff, with their performance team. And so this is just another you know, aspect of this whole saga that, that, we, that we've been tracking for now a couple months. At the end of the day, the Sixers did not want James Harden to be a distraction for this team on the road. They play on national TV tonight mm. uh, against the Milwaukee Bucks. There's, to me, there's no sign that James Harden's going to play anytime soon uh, as he tries to ramp up. And the question really becomes, when and if Daryl Morey just eventually moves him, I think it's, it's moving into that inevitable stage. Does it finally happen? Uh, do we think he'll train super hard uh, when he's home alone? Or how, how do we think this will go? Listen, it just seems like a constant battle. And now it's like James Harden can say he tried, right? He went yeah. to the plane. They little, I'm picturing them, going, them the flying plane. off wave into him. You know what I mean, <laughs> the way I'm picturing it play out in my head is hysterical. Oh, but now, I, now in his head, the ball is in Daryl's court. You know, I tried. I want to be there. I want to retire six years. So it's eventually, I think it's not going to get cured anytime soon. I think it's only going to continue to get worse. He's going to continue to miss more and more games. Um, but it, yeah, this it's 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 funny when you say it's like he went funny. to the plane and they didn't let him on the plane. Like it, that's it's, it's how do you sad. know that? I give this so tidbit sad. though to his credit, despite popular opinion, JH works extremely hard. So he will be doing he all work. the good things when he they're does gone. Work. 
He won't be mad and sort of. Well, sulking. this is the thing. They, 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 they talk about ramp ups. I heard James Harden's been doing two a days in Houston for the last week. So he works, man. So yeah. it's just purely him, they don't I, want. I give him credit for that. And that doesn't just happen overnight, right? He's not gonna. If he, we'll see, right? We'll see what kind Absolutely. of shape he looks in. We'll see if he puts up crazy numbers and like like the Jokic thing, acting like he's had an off season doing horses. That guy clearly was grinding. James Harden's no dummy. He knows that at the end of the day, he's whenever he comes to play, he's got to produce and he's got to be that guy. All right. So back into the minds of the players, um, the ones that are carrying on the show. How, how do you handle that? You knowing that we're probably never going to have him back as a teammate, but what happens now, nobody knows. You're trained for it. Um, when you play on teams, it, we, you always have that next man up mentality. The, you know, those guys watch TV as well. They've been watching the saga over the summer and, and getting ready for the season. So him not being there, I think they were already prepared for that. Yeah, and James, again, this aura, this this reputation he has, he's this bad guy. He's not. I no. play with him. I, I right. love James Harden. He's one awesome. of my favorites. Yeah, he is one of my favorite <clears throat> teammates I've ever had. It's just he's put himself in this kind of situation where he's under a microscope and he's this light shines on him. And, and has he handled everything perfectly? No. But when the, more, the longer this continues and keeps going, I don't think it lingers in the locker room. Like Tyrese Maxey's not mad at James right. Harden. You, you get to a point where you understand it's a business and yeah. James Harden's doing what's best for James Harden. And that's not personal to Nurse or, or Tyrese or Joel. He's doing what he wants to do for his career. And it's just as a teammate like Lou said you get numb to it you get you trained to it and if I'm another guy with an opportunity as a younger guy I'm almost kind of happy I kind of want him to stay yeah, like, away I want, but do you yeah, talk like like would you guys text him and be like hey what's going like what's going on no, what's I the mean, we know what's going on but you don't it's not like because yeah. I would wonder how sometimes that works you, I I'm a pro too yeah. So I got to get ready. I got to get ready for the season. Yeah. I got to get ready for games and road trips as well. So I can't be wrapped up and wor worried about what James is doing. And again, like I'm Kelly Oubre. I'm DeAnthony Mellon. I'm these guys. This is more opportunity for me. So take advantage of it now while you can. There was uh, some news yesterday that the All-Star game is going back to East versus West because feelings were definitely hurt. I told you guys Jokic was mad last year. You can't get hmm. picked last. Um, why? 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 <laughs> No, well, no, no more player draft, and I think they looked at Indianapolis being, the, you know, uh, Naismith, you know, revolutionized mm. basketball there, made basketball popular there, and I think that was one of the, one of the reasons. But Adam Silver said yesterday the player participation rule. We want guys to play harder in the All Star game. They feel like East versus West could be an answer to that. Um, so no more player draft. It's going back to the traditional East versus West. But that's where we started. And, like, good luck. Like, if I'm on the Rockets, you think I care that the West Conference is, wins the All-Star game? There, there's no real solution here. I will say, Why I, can't you do world versus the U.S.? I like the idea I of going East that. versus or West. Or giving finals home court advantage. Well, Something you, has to be at stake. I mean, you'd have to cut 12 All-Stars. I mean, yeah. You're not going to have a 24 guy. And the minute someone actually plays hard and, God forbid, gets hurt in this yeah. game, like, it's just, there's no solution. All-Star weekend, it, it sucks. And it's, it's I, I, get, I like going back to the jerseys where, even wear your own jerseys. They're East. never going to play hard. Never. Hold on, you guys. You're ruining it for everyone else They're at home. So you're telling me you're never gonna this, play doesn't do it, this doesn't make it more interesting? No, but I do say I hated the draft. I think I finally right. make my All-Star game and then I get shit on, on national TV getting drafted <laughs> last. Like, I think that's... Ding, ding. I, I think that was hilarious. I think that's... Oh, did you, the facial expressions? It's sad. It's it was sad, sad last the, year. The peak the of your career, expression. you make an All-Star game. Oh, my God. And then the most embarrassing thing, you get drafted last on national TV. It felt that. very... Uh, like, just two white dudes were sitting on the stage last yeah. night. The last and, the MVP, and, the MVP, <laughs> and the MVP goes last. Sick draft. It kind of made me feel bad for everybody involved. Silly. Like, uh, this is honesty time. Truth serum. Um, how do dudes really feel about All-Star Week? Would y'all just rather have, just give me the week off? Just give them the uh, week off. <laughs> I'd rather be honored with making the All-Star game while getting the news in Turks and Caicos for the week <laughs> off. You know what I mean? You go there to build your brand, to make money, to go to parties. You don't go there to, like, compete against the Western Conference. You don't care. Santa's dead. I mean, <laughs> Way to go, guys. I mean even, the, the, even the practices are, are, like, it's a spectacle. It's, the fans are there. Yeah. It's a sold-out crowd for a practice. Like, how serious can you take the game? Could you what? just make it two days? Like, y'all fly in, you do one day, you play, and you're out. Then you have... You, I mean, you can cut guys some do off that, of it. Yeah. Guys kind of do I know that. Some do, but others guys are do fly on, on Saturday, play the game, and then go vacation. The reality of it is you're 50-plus games in at that point. You want a break. Yeah. And it's kind of like an interruption when you know for a fact the rest of the league is somewhere chilling. Having a That's ball. That's true, too. <laughs>
Oh, just make it. I know it makes a lot of money. It creates a lot of revenue. Fans love it. But to make it like all NBA. Just tell tell me who's an all star, and then just have maybe so nothing. No game. No slam dunk. It's no just. Three it's point. so. It's such a. I like bummer. the game. Like it's. I, I I like the pageantry of it. I just don't think they're ever gonna play. Hard. It's never going to be a good competitive game where you see the top 24 NBA play really players play. in the world play. We're sad. These are two players. I know. You know I, I can't, can't speak can't from, argue. From, from, from the experience of it. But uh, I, you listen, the dunk contest I think was fun last year. A couple years ago in Chica Chicago All-Star Weekend. like Because the city was game, Chicago. That, that was the first Elam ending and also Chicago for that sure. Helps. But Elam ending, first year of that. That game was that game was live. Even the dunk contest last year ended up being cool, but like I didn't know two of the people in it. Like, can you know, I tempt like you with making? I think we ran out of dunks. Have we ran out of dunks? No, no this like saying we've run out of music. Going between the legs twice. was doing or... a lot of stuff out of nowhere, and he's got some yeah, but, in, like, stuff in the bag. Who's he playing for? That hey, <laughs> I didn't say he, I didn't say he's a nice player now. <laughs> no, it doesn't matter. So, so there's the there's an issue. You know, the fans are there to see the people that they really can love and admire. Even though he put on a serious show, he did a lot of things, but it's kind of like I want to see Ja dunk. I want to see Zion yeah, exactly. dunk. I don't what if we see do Mac it in a, like a like like one city that everybody loves? What if we change the city, the host? Does that? Well, that's anything? another thing. We you haven't can't. even got into that. Like <laughs> in February in Cleveland for All Star Weekend when my teammates are in Bahamas. Well, it's Indianapolis this year. It it, it, it is in <laughs> Indianapolis. It is in the Bay oh, next year though. That's it is in the awesome. Bay next year. That's though. a little better. Golden State. Uh, that's Indi better. Yeah. Indianapolis this year. It's Indianapolis. <laughs> We're not doing that, right? Okay, good. Um, I just want to make sure. <laughs> we, we've seen Wemby and Chet, but how did the Thompson twins look? That's coming back when Run It Back returns. Run it back, run it back, run it up, run it back, yeah. run it up, run it back, yeah, yeah. Well, we had uh, we had more games, and we heard about Ben Simmons in the offseason, so everyone's curious. First game since February 15th. But the Cavs win this one. It was a thriller. How about that? First game of the season. Mitchell with 27, 6, and 4. Ben Simmons, hmm, 4 points, 10 assists, 9 rebounds. And Cam Thomas had a night, 36 uh, points in 25 minutes. Look, uh, Ben Simmons was back in the starting lineup. And it's, you know, in his defense, it's been quite quiet because we've had so many other things to talk about. But what do they need from him for things to work? Having aggressiveness. Like, mm -hmm. I, I, think, I think the Nets want to see a more aggressive Ben Simmons. Um, I, I think, you know, you, you saw a little bit of it in preseason, shooting jumpers a little bit more. But, uh, you know, kudos to him. He, I think he had nine, ten assists, ten rebounds. Um, but I think, you know, late in games last season, Jock Vaughn went away from Ben Simmons because of the, of the liability potentially on offense. He did so again last night. Uh, ben Simmons benched down the stretch of the game. They went heavy with Mikael Bridges, Cam Thomas, Cam Johnson with the ball in their hands. So Ben Simmons having more aggressiveness. But if you're, if you're the Nets, you know, continuing to, you know, having Ben Simmons as your point guard, leading your offense, I, I can't count how many point guards in the league today are not a threat offensively as far as being able to shoot, being able to score. Um, and, and the Nets kind of have that in Ben Simmons. You know, is, is a point forward role more more apt for him. Uh, you know, this is all for, for Jack Wall and the Nets to figure out. Have you given up on the version of Ben Simmons that we may never see? Like all star Ben Simmons. Version. Yeah, the Absolutely. best version. Yeah, the best. Yeah, that ships out. And it, it's, I love to see him out there playing, but like Sean said, yeah. it, it, I just don't understand where's that aggressiveness, where's that versatility when he, and it's the power of social media too, right? I almost started believing seeing these highlights, these I videos. Know. I'm like, oh shit, he's back. He's back. Then the game starts and he, turn, he gets timid and he's 6'10 and has this frame and can go coast to coast and has great vision dropping dimes and he just, it's it, he plays scared. And I don't know what happened and how, how he got here, but the <laughs> fact that he's playing and he's healthy, that's that's a good start. But yeah, the idea of that he's just gonna turn into this 20 and 10 all-star ever again is is not possible. I was part of the beginning of the end. That that Sixers Hawks uh, Ooh. that matchup where you didn't take the layup. Oh, uh, we were having a ball with that. I'm not rooting against Ben Simmons. I would like for him to really <laughs> find middle ground in mm. um, how he's portrayed and just being healthy again and being on the floor and having an impact. What is worse, to be hyped and to disappoint, or to never have been hyped at all? To be hyped and disappointed. Yeah, I mean, it's, you don't ever want to be labeled a, a bust, right? You don't want to have all this talent that just doesn't pan out. People had such high expectations. That would be a, a hard burden to carry. On the other side, uh, Cavaliers, talented young core, but Donovan Mitchell's the dude, and the question's quite simple. Can he be the number one guy on a contending team, Lou? 
I think so. I just don't think it's this group. Fair enough. <laughs> yeah, I just, I just don't think it's this group. I think they're talented. I think they're going to make some noise in the East. Um, but I think he could be a number one guy on a really good team built around him. Yeah, I agree. And I think the experience they got last year in the mm -hmm. postseason and going through that, I think it's really going to help them. But looking at the Eastern Conference, there's a huge gap between them and the top. And they're kind of right jumbled in the middle. So it just shows you how top heavy the Eastern Conference is. But yeah, I love Evan Mobley. I think the Max Struess pickup was great. Yep. He, he hit Struess nine, had a big nine night. threes last night. Yeah. So I do think Darius Garland was an all star last year. So I think they have the pieces to continue to get better. But like Lou said, they're still, they're still a ways away. But is, something, is there something Something specific missing? I think they just need they need something else. They need that one two punch. They need they need some they need more vets. They need a deeper bench and, and they, they need a, a collection of things. It's just the the, the, the conference is so loaded mm -hmm. where it's tough. It's tough to compete. And they're gonna be kinda in there in the middle and they're gonna be fun to watch. And they're gonna be a tough team to beat four times in the postseason, but they're just missing one or two pieces. Uh, Thunder Bulls, uh, the Thunder team might be kind of fun to watch. I'm not going to lie. Um, they crush the Bulls, 124-104. Chet, all eyes, Eight. 11 points, four rebounds, zero blocks. That's nice. SGA finished with 31-10. There's my guy. 12 of 18. There he is. There he is. Top five. So, oh, well, top five. Top five. Top five. <laughs> <laughs> Look, Chandler, we know Ch Chet missed hey, his rookie mm. season, his quote-unquote rookie season. Blake Griffin also did that and then came back and mm. won Rookie of the Year. Yeah. I know... He's very much in the running for favorites of this. Kenny? I think so. And I thought he was my pick preseason. And I just think that the year that the Thunder will have as a team puts him ahead of those guys. Again, Scoot's going to have a great year with numbers. Wimby's going to have a great year. Brandon Miller's going to have big mm. games. So is Chet. And he's going to be on a, a, you know, a six to eight, whatever seed they end up getting. So I think... That helps him a lot. And again, that year of just practicing with these guys, being in the weight room, being in an NBA facility all year long is huge to his growth. It's, 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 he almost shouldn't be eligible to win Rookie of the I, Year. Like, I feel you know I mean? like, feelings about it. It's not really fair. Like Blake, like Blake, yeah. he's, it was so good, but like he's not a rookie. He's already been through the whole year of shoot arounds and I mean, and but you can make that case for the G League guys too. Yeah, That's but they're too. playing against and other G League. And the overseas guy. Like Wimby has been a pro five years already. Yeah, but I just, he's 12. She's still a pro. <laughs> I, say, I actually do. I get it. Like I, intellectually, I understand why he's in the running. But you're right. It's kind of he's he's been somewhere for a year. He's been same, with those same coaches yeah. in that system. When he knows that offense, even though he didn't play it, I disagree. He, he literally has seen those practices for a year. Yep. And again, I know I respect college. I respect Euro League. But like the NBA is another level, and he's had a year under his belt that Brandon Miller hasn't. Alabama, University of Alabama doesn't have the same things that the Oklahoma City Thunder do. So I think it's a huge advantage. I don't know. I, I'm, I'm going to stay on the international guys. I think this is where my this is where my argument is going to live. Because yeah. I'm, I'm just picturing Luca in my head as 16 years old playing in the Olympics. Yeah. That that experience is worth more than I think the University of Alabama or being in that That's practice fair. facility for a year. So I say no. I say it's cool. OK, I'm, I can't argue with that. I mean, that, that is fair. He had a moment last night. Is it, is it his welcome to the NBA moment? It's the official one. This is a thing. Uh, let's check out Chet right here trying to, I don't know. What do you guys think? Is oh, no. this the moment? <laughs> oh, that's it. Come on. You oh. got to give Jermaine credit for that. He's 6'11", moving like that. Come on, let's give him credit. Whee! Hey. Good Owie. morning. Ouch. It, I think it's more of a slip. Uh, okay, like, so we don't count it? Break them all. <laughs> it just looked bad. Yeah, I think it, nah, did you have, Did you guys have, do you remember your welcome to the league? Mine was similar to that. Really? Steve Nash put me clean on my ass. Steve Nash did? Oh. Yes, he did. Quick crossover. I was a little excited, put me down. We need the footage of that. Yeah, I'd like to see that. It's I know, probably, I kind of, we'll find it. Probably within the four minutes that I played. <laughs> <laughs> we'll get it. it. We'll find it quickly. <laughs> we'll get it. It's somewhere in there. Wait, do you have one? Do you remember yours? Not like a comment. Honestly, I think just banking a free throw is almost like embarrassing. That is not that a like welcome a, to the league moment. No, I don't remember. I don't remember that exact where I got you know my ankles broke or dunked on bad. I, I don't remember exactly that, but I'm, there was plenty. Okay, fair enough. There was plenty. Oh, uh, you want to talk a little SGA top five um, <laughs> MVP wise? Realistically, what do you think? No. Should we? No, not there yet. Um, I'm I'm going. Stop. I'm all in. Stop. What? I'm all in. You can't win MVP on the 10th seed. Why you not? Can't. <laughs> but you can win it on like four. Yes, that's true. Like four, you can win it. Wait, plus eighteen hundred. Ooh, that's a good. The a, odds it's are a great. gambler's paradise. We, listen, it's we go for it. It is, but we, we talked about all these guys in the top five, joking around. We really, we named like nine people. Yeah, it's fair. 
it's a tall task. Is it yeah. possible? Sure, but I think there's too good of talent, too good of teams for you know the Thunder to have a, rep, a guy rep. Well, uh, we, we Shea's going to have the publicity machine behind him, though. Yeah. How he dresses, how he carries yep. himself. League fit. He's, uh, he's, yeah, he's turning it. He's turning he's into a pop culture type of First guy. First team league. He's fits. gonna have that attention on him. He I, just did I the like... modeling shoot for Skims. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. He skims too. He's yeah, skims. he skims. <laughs> this is skims, by the way. Did you get paid for that? No, wish trying to right now. No, it's good. Good call. <laughs> um, the Bulls already had some drama. Uh, Billy Donovan left the locker room at the players' request. What was going on in there? I, I think a lot of the frustration last night with the Bulls was that it was the same old and players led by Nikola Vucevic. I'm told they expressed that the offense was the same as last year. They thought it was going to be a different offense. They disliked what happened last night. And there were some pretty poignant remarks from what I'm told last night from the players about the fact that they weren't passing the ball enough and the fact that they feel like they need a true point guard in Chicago. And so when you think about the future of the, of the Bulls, they have Zach Levine locked in long term. They give Nikola Vucevic a, uh, a three-year extension in the summer. DeMar DeRozan is on an expiring contract right now. He's extension eligible. The Bulls want to bring DeMar DeRozan back, whether that's in an extension or free agency. They've been talking about an extension, but I'm told that the sides are apart right now in, in, on multiple fronts, years, salary, and also DeMar DeRozan wants to see where this Bulls team goes. They're 0-1 to start the year. They had a players meeting after game one of the season. <laughs> and so that, that's not like the way it. to start the year, but DeMar DeRozan wants to see where this is going. We, like, ready? we said this last year. This is a team, as soon as they get off to a bad start, they're going to blow it up, and then they, they didn't have a great start, and they have the same team back. Of course it's the same offense. It's the same team. Like, I don't know what But didn't they, they know it was going to be the same offense yeah, before the whistle? Like, of course. They had a whole know? camp with, during it. So why sure. wait? Why not? I don't know, but I, I like it. Let's let's get it out the, out the way now. Usually with, with player-only player meetings, it's a little too too late. Ten yeah. games yeah. in, oh. yeah. two and eight. Mm. Yeah, when, when it's already said and done and nothing can really change. So to try to get on the same page after game one I'm cool with it and this is a vet team these guys are these for sure these guys have been there before and they don't want to lose but this is a team I fully expect that is disappointing when's the earliest you guys had a player yeah, like meeting in a season one game I think about, like yeah like yeah games, like three and seven start and then you're panicking about ten game. yeah I think we, we <laughs> usually go like 10 game increments so it's like after our first show on Monday like guys we need to talk about what just happened well we're that talking about MVP it. odds after one game of course they're talking they're they're yeah it's but it's weird to me to be like, we've had an entire time, we practiced, we had training camp, we did all these things, and then go out there and be like, huh, it's the same offense. Y'all knew it was going to be the same It's also offense. interesting when a team that you know just doesn't expect, do you think the Bulls just magically are going to be good this That's, year? Like, uh, what do yeah. you think? Delusional. But when you have a players-only meeting and the coach isn't in there, I don't think that he's the topic of discussion. I think they're getting some things understood within themselves. And I played for that man for four years. He, he will get... He will ether you. He will go nuts. So it's probably best that he stepped out of the room because he's got that New York thing where he's not backing down from anything. I'll be right back. Thanks yeah. so much. Uh, we will be right back with uh, some picks and some see how we did on our first round of those when Run It Back returns. Run it back, run it back, run it up, run it back, yeah. run it up, run it back, yeah. Wrapping things up, our first week in the books. Lou, how you feeling? I'm amazing. <laughs> <laughs> oh, he's feeling it. Wow. I'm him. I'm him. And it's your birthday tomorrow. You, you caught me off guard. I, I didn't expect you to ask me a question. <laughs> what? What do you mean? It's been, <laughs> you got to be on your toes on, on this set. It's Luke. not on the script. Yeah. Yeah. I know, it's not on there. I'm you know what there. is on the script. First week was yeah. amazing. Thank you, guys. We did it. Hopefully, we'll all be back next week. And we are going to the Laker, Lakers game tonight. Is that what's happening? I think I think Chandler eating. is a game time decision. Yeah, I think I'm a late scratch. but Late scratch. Uh, I don't know if that's confirmed. Yeah. I think he's still going to be mulling this <laughs> over this afternoon. I need six gallons of caffeine. It's yeah. injected into my veins. And we'll be fine. We'll see you guys on Monday. Up. Enjoy the weekend. Run it back, yeah. Run it up. Run it back, yeah. yeah. Run it up. Run it back.